Welcome to the Thunder and Lightning Show. We have a few special guests today, and we're going to be talking about the Latin Mass and young people. Our first guest is Aaron. Um, we would like you, Aaron, to talk a little bit about um, your conversion and what you like about the Latin Mass. So if you want to go ahead. Yes, yeah, so my name is Aaron Klaus. I'm 22 years old. I converted to Catholicism just a few years ago. Um, I was formerly a Protestant, Grace Brethren. I actually wasn't baptized until I became Catholic, wow. the, uh, that denomination. Um, yeah, baptism, as in Catholicism, you know, it teaches that baptism saves you. In Protestantism, at least that denomination that was considered works-based salvation, that was wrong. So, um, yeah, people wouldn't get baptized until much later in life, and it really didn't do anything but um so that was in 2018 i was baptized i was first drawn to the catholic church because i love history and so i started to study kind of some of the early church what the early christians were like and i found out that what they believed was almost nothing of what i believe <laughs> and so i started to research things and i went to my first mass it was february 30th or february april 30th of 2017 and I was really struck by the beauty, which is interesting because I was a Novus Ordo um, parish, but compared to the Protestant service, it was very beautiful, very reverent whenever they distributed communion. And I was I was really blown away by that. Um, one thing that interested me was the Nicene Creed, which was read, and I was like, where did this come from? So when I got home, I did even more research, and I found out, you know, the Council of Nicaea, Council of Constantinople, and there was the list of all the ecumenical councils. I just started to read more, and I was like, this is, I want to be like the early Christians. This is something that I want to do. So I went through RCIA, ended up becoming baptized. I was baptized by Father Leo, who unfortunately just passed away um, earlier this year. But he was a very great priest. I was, I was glad that he brought me into the church. And then um, just about a year ago, um, Ethan here, my friend, he, uh, he informed me of, that there was a Latin Mass. I never knew the difference between the Novus Ordo or the Latin Mass, and he informed me that there was a Latin Mass up the mountain. It was very reverent. It's about an hour away from where we live, and so um, I told him to text me when he was coming up here, and it was, um, I think, June 21st or June 23rd. I forget which day it was. Yeah, the Feast of Corpus Christi. It was of 2019. Wow, so, so you've been uh, just here a year, basically, then. Yep. Hey, wow, that's and like so, it longer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. And so Ethan and his uncle drove up, and then I drove up and met them there. I sat in the back, and I was just blown away by the reverence. Like there was the procession up with all the altar servers with the the cross carrying the incense, and Ryan was up singing. You know, they had the choir up there singing Gregorian chant. I was just the the high altar was up there. I was completely blown away. And then we actually did a procession out around like the parking yeah, lot and everything. And I was just yeah, yeah I was yeah. just blown away. I was like. Like, <laughs> I was just, I was in shock, and I, I remember I went up to Father, he's the priest here afterwards, and I was just blown away, and he, he invited me to stay after and kind of talk to them, and I've been here ever since yeah. pretty much, so yeah. I've, I've definitely learned a lot, I've grown a lot in my faith, I'm very thankful for this opportunity, I don't think I ever got a chance to officially no, thank you for coming <laughs> and come up here. And so. I think that out of all the people that I've brought up here, Corpus Christi was the best time it's, it's like hit or miss for your first time. Yeah, yeah, it's the best time. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Aaron, because you used okay. to be a Protestant. Um, what is it like coming from a Protestant background, converting to Catholicism, and then you have everybody there, like your friends from the Protestant church, your family and that. Uh, what is that like, um, having that kind of split in your life? Yeah, so, well, my family's... Protestant and they, they they don't go to church so like honestly it wasn't with my parents it wasn't a huge deal because they really didn't care to be honest um like it didn't bother them like where I was really going to church but some of my friends like yeah they were like oh Catholics you know the idol worshippers they're going to hell and all this stuff and so those were some Protestants told me that other ones were like oh you're as long as you're seeking Christ you're okay man but yeah it um there was definitely a a rift there between my friends and stuff and it actually probably took it about a year until i started really talking to them again afterwards no, about, about two years because when i first started going there yeah i just started talking to them again like this past this past summer actually yeah so um and it was crazy like i didn't realize the things that they believed even like i i forgot that you know everything because 
I was talking to them just about um, some of the things that they believed about baptism, the Eucharist and everything. And it's just, I remember um, obviously being in that like belief system, but yeah, it was just, everything just made so much sense to me. And I tried to explain it to them. I hope it stuck with them. A lot of them did say that they, after like hearing my explanation, as far as the Eucharist, it's, you know, you must, as the Jews, during the Passover, they would have to eat the, the lamb that was slain. They had to eat the flesh of it. So Christ is our Passover lamb. He was sacrificed. We must eat his body, drink his blood, like he said. I went through John chapter 6 with them. And a lot of them started to open up to that, which was actually really good. But then, um, yeah, they, they still kind of get... Uh, the, the area I live is very Protestant, so anything Catholic is kind of like... They, they kind of start to, you know, get interested in it. And they're like, wait, I can't believe that because it's Catholic. But, mm. yeah, so... It definitely caused a rift with some of my friends, but. And you've been, you've learned a lot by dialoguing and like evangelizing these Protestants. Cause I remember uh, it was near, not long after you first started coming up here, uh, you, you borrowed uh, the Ludwig yeah. Ogg book, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. And you were using that every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh, I'm talking to this Protestant pastor online and I'm going over baptismal regeneration and original yeah. sin and all that. And so uh, you kind of went through, got that experience of doing the apologetics. And so it's a tremendous experience that when you come into the church, you want to share that with everybody. Yeah. It's nice to have people. It's nice to have converts. I mean, this is the way the church should be. You should have a fresh crop of noobs every year <laughs> who are coming in. And they all bring their own personal experience. And, um, you know... It, I'm just a cradle Catholic, and so all I know is my own life, and everybody who's born Catholic kind of like goes through this same or similar experience. And when you come from a Protestant background, evangelical, you bring a lot of knowledge and personal skills to the church that otherwise we wouldn't have, so it's good. Now, now I'd like to move to Ethan. I'd like to ask you, Maybe your experience of how you found the Latin Mass and you know what you like about the Latin Mass because you are definitely younger than myself and Ryan. <laughs> so, and this is a show about youth and the Latin Mass. So if you'd like to give your experience. So for me, what introduced me to Latin Mass was actually a live stream by a Catholic Instagram page called Catholic Teen Posts. I was at my grandparents. It's really like nothing special, but I asked my grandparents like I heard that this church about 20 minutes away has Latin Mass. Do you want to go to Mass there tomorrow? Because it, it was Saturday night. And my grandma's like, we we don't do that. But <laughs> your uncle does. He'll take you. He's been there a couple times. And so my uncle picked me up. And it was kind of funny because going to Nova Soro, it's like, you know, you wear your shorts and sometimes even a muscle shirt to Mass. <laughs> and I had, I had flip-flops and shorts and a t-shirt packed for Holy Mass. Um, and so that's how I went to my first Latin Mass yeah. in flip flops, and now I feel I know how silly that is now, but it's okay. That's how I was introduced to the Latin Mass, and and that was was that Corpus Christi? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. That was just that was it was in August. It was just a regular August of 2018, 19. Mm, I can't. It was yeah. It would be the one before the year for someone. Okay, August of 2018. 2018. Yeah. But see, it took me a while because I didn't go. Like, you know, every Sunday after. Like, yeah, I was probably, yeah. I probably went twice before Aaron uh, went for his first time. Okay, yeah. Um, and what, what did you know? Because you had seen the lab mass on the Instagram, and then you, it interested you, and then you went in real life. And how was that? Was it what you expected, or how did it impact you when you actually attended in real life? Well, on social media amongst young people, it's like super blown up. Like it's like yeah. Latin Mass is this great thing. So because I was influenced by that culture a little bit, yeah. When the bells rang for people to stand up and the yeah. chant started, I was like, yeah. Wow, this is it's real this life. Is it. <laughs> I was like, I'm here. Yeah. And yeah, it was just it was a great experience to actually be part of what people were talking about on social media. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things the bells and the incense are just like the externals are so awesome in the Latin Mass and that's one of the things and I think that's one of the things that really draws the youth is that you have like the silent parts but then you also have like the bells to let you know like okay something important's happening and that's the youth is a lot about personal prayer like 
I know it sounds super cheesy, but like my personal relationship with Jesus, yeah, yeah. it sounds cheesy, but the youth is about that. And the Nova Sordo is like about interaction and stuff. But I yeah. think Latin Mass gives a greater opportunity for you to expand on your relationship with Jesus because you're not forced to respond here and there. You're not forced to stand up and you, you could kneel and pray your rosary the entire time yeah. if you wanted to. And there's just a lot of personal prayer time because, you know, the altar servers are responding. And when I'm at youth group, I talk about that. Like, this is the perfect place to grow your relationship with Jesus. Yeah. It, it happened with Aaron. It happened with me. I think everybody that goes a lot in Mass and then goes more than once, it's just it's a whole new way of worshiping and thinking. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is one benefit. It seems like to a lot of people, you, youth enjoy Eucharistic adoration. Mm -hmm. And the Latin Mass is basically like adoration on steroids. <laughs> oh, yes. Because you do have from the from the from the beginning of the canon until the Pater Noster, it's basically a, a Eucharistic adoration. But it's more than that because it's the whole activity, the liturgy of the church. And then you have all the teaching, the lessons beforehand, the sermon, the beautiful mm -hmm. chant and everything. Um, but it's a tremendous contrast, as you mentioned, between the new and the old mass. Whereas in the new, there's pretty much never any silence. No time for you to pray personally. You've always got to be hearing me, the priest, yeah. talk. Yeah. I have him put, so I'm talking the whole time, and you can't have a moment of silence. That's more clericalism, if you ask me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I am Father Ryan, Parent Ryan. I am so <laughs> very important. How could you not want to hear what I have to say? <laughs> With such and rigidity and divisiveness, anyway. <laughs> and tell your jokes, too. <laughs> yeah. I tell my jokes. I have the best jokes. What do you have to laugh? I tell them in my first <laughs> homily, the middle homily, and the homily before that I, dis I finally dismiss you. Who doesn't want to hear my jokes? I have the best jokes. Okay, anyway. Everyone, yeah. everyone laughs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's also one thing that I really enjoyed about the Latin Mass more was where at the Novus Order, not criticizing Novus Order priest, but it feels as though everyone's kind of looking at the priest centering on the priest and the priest is kind of the center of it whereas at the latin mass because it's ad orientum the priest is turned around and we're all facing christ and especially yeah. during the consecration whenever everyone you know kneels down there the bells ring and the priest holds up the bread for the consecration your eyes are fixed on the body of christ not yeah. you know you're not and it's like it's like this is the moment it's happening like, yeah. yeah i i know it's sort of it, it's not emphasized and yes. so at youth group we had adoration We've had adoration twice after spending a night talking about what the Eucharist is because the amount of uncatechized Catholic is, Catholics is among the youth. We yeah. can't bring them the Latin Mass. We've got to get started with the basics, yeah. even, now, even if they're 17. Yeah. But they've loved it. And as even Aaron brought up, uh, Aaron, I ride with Aaron in the Latin Mass, and one of my friends came too with us, and two of uh, my other friends met up with us. And it was the three kids' first time up here. And that was one thing they loved about it was... There's also community, but the emphasis on the Eucharist and that, that silence with God. Um, was that their takeaways? Because I wanted to mention that, that you brought three noobs with you today yeah. who, right, had never been to Latin Mass before. They did admit, yeah, they never went before, yeah. but they did admit they were kind of confused. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I told yeah. them, your first time, you're not going to understand. And I think that's a beautiful thing yeah. is to just take it back. But staying after for breakfast and even yeah. seeing how engaging Father is yeah. with everybody that one of them even said why can't every parish be like this <laughs> yeah. and i was like that's a good question and there is an answer but i want to say <laughs> yeah <laughs> well for the record ethan actually runs his own youth group so that's um you hear him mentioning youth group and doing uh you know talking about doing the different activities and that's one thing another question i wanted to ask you about like running the youth group um do you do a lot of traditional oriented things and like what are you finding of the reaction of you know the youth group members so i'll probably get judged for this but we haven't gone traditional yet because they're just not even at the point to bring them to that like half of these people didn't know what adoration even was yeah. so we're starting out with the basics and the youth group grew to 28 people uh just last time we had our last youth meet and we're going to expand to another parish uh, where our priest is a little more traditional so we were thinking about having a Novus Ordo that's ad orientum, like just the slow process. Yeah. And hopefully one day we'll have like, you know, a night where we look at the mass throughout history and, you know, we can yeah. bump the Latin mass off a little bit. And then one day, hopefully we'll bring the youth group to Latin mass. Yeah, it's kind of a situation where, yes, you have to catechize those kids. But another part of catechism is uh, the come and see. 
you know, that opportunity that you have grabbing one or two kids and say, hey, come on up, we'll see this lad mass. Yeah, two of those kids came from youth group. I met them oh, in youth they group. they were? Okay, yeah. And, great. you know, that's, I even even creating a Catholic culture, like I brought my great-grandmother's Latin mass missile to show some of the, yeah. I call them kids, but they're literally my age. Yeah. But, you know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's just creating, it, like normalizing the Latin mass culture and then bringing them to it, I yeah. think is what we're going to do. Yeah, that's so cool. So, um, part of that, part of the catechizing the new people is um, letting them ask questions. I think our faith isn't a secret. Like, this shouldn't be a secret. This <laughs> Bible shouldn't be a secret. It should be, because that's how I found out about the Latin Mass. There was someone who was very traditional and he really liked the Latin Mass. And I was asking him questions about the Latin Mass, like, oh, well, why did they change the Mass and, like, different things. And his explanations were basically like, well, he, he didn't really want to go full out John the Son of Thunder on me, yeah. but he um, he was saying, well, that, that's a good question. I don't really know why they wanted to do that. and It, it just made me, so some questions led to more questions, yeah. and then basically a lot of the, the questions that you have lead you to the Latin Mass, you know, from my experience. And I think that's, that's one good thing with the youth, is that whenever you bring them to the Latin Mass and they see all these things, it's just going to lead to a lot of questions because our faith isn't a secret. It shouldn't be a secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of traditions that have been buried. Yeah. So. Intentionally, probably. And yeah. even yeah. at Novus Ordo, if you ask about the Latin maps to the priest, you're going to get snapped at. You're not yeah. going to ask questions. And my generation, our generation, is about rebel rebelling. Like I feel like yeah. every person yeah. that is 17 wants to rebel. And so for the no Novus Ordo to be the norm, yeah, people like that a little bit young people like to rebel a little rebel, bit yeah. and they like to ask questions and so when the priest like shrugs them off it's like oh i want to check this out and find yeah answers for myself. well what's yeah. going on here yeah um i'll just add an anecdote because uh i my first latin mass i attended i was 21 years old it was in the year like 2001 okay and i was going to remark wow. i was telling you about how different the world the latin yeah. mass community is between 2001 and today is the first off I was like what's this I've seen something about the Tridentine Mass and SSPX and I was like I have no idea what this is but I had known that the Mass was different before because my mom had said well it was in Latin priest didn't face you he wore this funny hat and that's what she remembered and um, so I looked it up on the internet and I said oh yeah the Pope approved this thing so where is this at so there was this uh, the, the parish in Pittsburgh that had it and, but anyway, I was doing research, and I was like, what's this ritual like? This was before YouTube. There was no footage of the Latin Mass on the internet. Stings. You had no idea what this thing looked like, other than maybe there was like this postage stamp, grainy video, and it was like, I think I see a priest in an altar. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, and it's like in somebody's garage or something. But uh, now, you know, you, th this is the great thing about the internet is, there's mass every week on the internet. Every mass you want to see. Do you want to see low mass? Do you want to see Misa Cantata? Do you want to see Solomon mass? Oh, how about a pontifical mass at the fall stool? Oh, maybe the throne. How about an ordination? How about the consecration of an abbot or abbess? It's all there. Oh, and like, I want to learn Gregorian chant. Boy, who can teach me? Well, everything is there on the internet. Every book is on the internet. Uh, the practice videos are all on the internet, so it's it, the conversion, the accepting, uh, the jumping into the traditional uh, swimming pool is so much easier now than it was back in 2001, and people know a lot more. Also, in 2001, there was a lot of like cranky people who were the old guard of the traditionalists, but they were people who were like abused and had grown up. Uh, they really loved the old mass and it was stolen from them and they had to attend mass in garages and barns and basements and stuff and suffer from under bishops and priests and so those were the people who were kind of like there when you went to this mass and you're like what's this guy all getting agitated about that somebody's not wearing a tie or whatever yeah here you know, i came my first time in shorts and flip-flops i know here comes the veil police but see that's a good thing now is you can just stroll in like, okay, you came in shorts and yeah. flip-flops. There's another fella here that converted from Lutheranism and because uh, his uncle uh, attends this Mass. 
and he did like the first mass he showed up he was wearing shorts or whatever and guess what nobody said anything to these people like oh i, don't, I can't believe i'm not sure a citation from the dress police they're definitely thinking it but see the thing yes. is because there are people that have those experiences they'll yeah. be like oh my gosh i felt so out of place so even my friend had kind of a low-cut dress and yeah it was pretty low cut here but she's like oh i felt like i were not gonna say on the show <laughs> i was like i was like i literally came to mass and flip flops i mean it's okay I mean, yeah. but with she me. and you learned and yeah. so now you're wearing a, a dress shirt and not and pants not yeah i had a tie but it was really hot see he wore a tie <laughs> Okay, and nobody told you, oh, you have to wear a tie, or otherwise you'll get a citation from the police. And so now when people come and they feel out of place like that, you can say, well, I did that too. So I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, we all did it. So. Yeah. My first time I just came in, it was like a button-up shirt with like khakis and stuff and just like wearing Sperry's or something. But then I come and I see Ryan in his suit and everything, and I'm like, you know, a lot of the men up there in their suits, <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, and then yeah. I start wearing my suit. And it's fun, too. I mean, when you practicing dressing up, it makes you comfortable dressing up. And then you, I don't know, it leads to success or something like that, you know. So I just want to change gears a little bit, maybe ask some closing questions. I guess the big question, we have a lot of, uh, a big age, age range of viewers on this channel. So what would either of you say about um, inspiring youth to attend the Latin Mass? Like how do we evangelize youth to attend the Latin Mass in like the easiest way possible you could think of? Your first. I was going to ask okay, I, 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 This probably sounds really bad, but um, propaganda, even though it's not propaganda because it's all true, but even if sometimes you talk up the Latin Mass a little bit more than what you think it is, because mm -hmm. um, people are like, oh my gosh, it's this great thing. Like, <laughs> I want to be a part of that. That's, that's yeah. what drew me in was yeah. this live stream. And, you know, we had six young people up here just talking together and talking about the community. Like, I stress the community up here yeah. that no no sort of parish in our diocese has from what I see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one thing that I think can definitely be um, used to draw people into Latin Mass is the beauty from the Mass. Because, I mean, especially since, like, Second Vatican Council and since the new Mass has been implemented, our churches, the beauty in our churches has been going downhill completely. You know, they, they came in and renovated the churches, and by that they took a sledgehammer to the high altar and put a table in. And so whenever people come and they see what what's there and then you you tell them that this is how things were and then you know this they feel almost robbed of mm -hmm. the beauty that they can see and like ethan was saying even the community and the fellowship and every latin mass community i've been to but um every latin mass parish that i went to there is that sense of fellowship afterwards that yeah. i feel like is missing in most if not all not yeah. all but most novus ordo um parishes and just, sorry. a lot of people too have went through parish closings. Yeah. They've had old priests who don't engage at all. And like I myself, I went through a school closure. And like he said, they feel robbed. And so really branding the Latin Mass, even though it's old, as a new idea, it's a new thing. It's something that's coming back. Yeah. Just that. Why do you think that there's a community in these Latin Mass parishes that doesn't exist at the Novus Ordos? It's a good question. I mean, I think it's probably a combination between the people that go there and also the priests. Um, not knocking Novus Ordo priests per se, but at least the Latin Mass priests are a lot more interested in the faith and, you know, actually bringing people into the church. Because I've met some really great Novus Ordo priests, but other ones are not so good. And they kind of actually not push people away, but they kind of say, you know, oh, we're all the same, you know, well, so there's no, not that um, desire to evangelize, so to speak, and here at the Latin Mass, Father, it's like, come on in, you know, um, I'd say there's also more faith among the people at the Latin Mass versus at the Novus Ordo, not yeah. in general, not, I'm sure there's, you know, there are people that go to Novus Ordo parishes that are very devout in their faith, but a lot of people who go up, you know, leave right after communion or something, and it's just like, you know, there's there's not that desire to fellowship, whereas here at the Latin Mass yeah. community. Literally, I went to Mass once, and I hung out with a friend in the park for like half hour, and I went back over because I wanted to get my rosary blessed. But when did you know the door was locked? It was like everybody closed up shop. The church isn't, the church is not existent until next Sunday. Yeah. And that's something that's not here. It's like yeah. people stick around and talk. Yeah, yeah, that's important. I think the, a lot of the Protestant groups are very yes. good at that. Fellowship. Yes. Yeah, the fellowship. That, that is something that I thought, especially whenever I became Catholic, that Protestant groups had better fellowship than the Catholic churches. But then I came up here and I was like, this is the best fellowship. Overall, though, I would still say they do, but that's, 
you know, we're building out even with youth group. Yeah. The the four people up here that came, they were like, oh, I remember you. I saw you at youth group. Yeah. And it was like, oh, and they're here at Latin Mass talking as friends at yeah. breakfast. And that's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Do you have any closing? No, thoughts? no. I just want to thank you fellas for coming on. This is a really good show. Yeah. Wow. Having us on. Yeah, yeah, I, wanted, I wanted to talk to you, and it was long delayed. There is a lot of foot dragging. But see, it's not so difficult to be world famous and get behind get behind the golden camera of the Thunder and Lightning program. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for appearing on this show. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of thoughts from the commenters. So thank you so much yeah, for watching. Thanks. This has been the Thunder and Lightning show. We are the lady. We will not be silent. Tend to Latin Mass. Yay!